This is the Xtool F1A Galvo scanner based dual wavelength laser engraver. I've seen a couple of reviews on YouTube and wanted to see how it handles in parts I do, so parts that I used in a machine shop. Setting up parts on this laser engraver is pretty easy. You've got a base plate with a couple of threaded holes. As a first test, I wanted to see how it handles rough materials. So here's a piece of aluminum with its cast skin still on it. The machine is equipped with a electric Z-axis for adjusting the focus, which you can do with a rotational knob at the side. In order to know when you are in focus, it has two laser diodes and x tells you once the points overlap, you are in focus on the surface of the part. I then close the enclosure and get started on the software. This is actually the first time using the software and I wanted to try out a small test engraving on this piece of aluminum. I adjust the font size and then the software actually has a functionality for testing new materials, which is called Material Test Array. You can adjust feeds and speeds there, the amount of rows, and once you're done, you hit the OK button. I change the size and position of it, so it's in the upper left corner of my test material, and afterwards set the diode setting to infrared radiation instead of blue. You then hit process and on the upper right corner you have a start button after which the machine beeps and the start button starts flashing. Pressing it you immediately start engraving the material and I think here you can really see the advantage of a Galvo based scanner. It's just that the movement speed between individual engraving operations is blazingly fast which saves time. After the engraving was done I took the part out and there was immediate success. You scored a little bit of font onto it. Taking a closer look at the font under our, um, our microscope, you can see that at high speeds and low power, there is not enough dwell time to really form the font. But at higher powers and lower speeds, you actually get really, really nice font. At the slowest speed setting, you're actually cutting a little bit into the material, which you can also feel if you scratch along the font with your fingernail. Along the sides you get the different speed settings and you can see this was actually quite the fast speed. Um, I personally like the engraving with a medium speed and medium power. Um, I think there it's the best visibility. Now cast aluminum is not really something I usually would engrave. So for a next test um, I took a piece of precision milled stock was a little bit larger than the machine, um, but was no problem to rest it there and the enclosure can close down, well, at least until the top height of the material. Um, I then started doing pretty much the same test, but this time instead of scoring the material, I was actually engraving the material, so fully lasering the font. And the result is amazing for bare aluminum. You get good contrast with the font from different angles. Uh, it was a pretty quick test. Taking a look under the microscope, you can once again see um, that the font is darker the longer you're lasering, so slower movement speed and obviously also darker with higher power. This was a line setting of 10 lines per millimeter, which you can adjust to any setting you would want. Afterwards, I wanted to see how scored, so just engraving the outline of the text, um, would look in aluminum, so I set up a quick material test array and hit the start button again. This time I'm using slower engraving speeds and you can see that the result is really, really good under the microscope. Um, the font has good contrast, um, everything is formed out nicely, and once again I think that the combination between a medium speed and medium power gives you the best results. Next I wanted to see how the machine handles engraving carbide. So I placed a very used carbide end mill in the machine, adjusted the focus so the two points overlie, and then um, I used the framing functionality where it basically shows you the outline of your engraving as a box. Engraving carbide end mills for me is a really useful functionality because I sometimes want to take out an end mill from the machine and later analyze it, for example, for wear or whether the coating is still on. Now, if you've ever marked a 
carbide end mill with a sharpie and then cleaned it before putting it under the microscope you do know the sharpie is gone so i was looking for a little bit more permanent solution and well laser marking is the obvious choice there because once it's scored into the material it should remain there forever i wasn't quite sure whether the infrared laser diode has enough power because carbide has a much higher melting point than for example aluminum so I went pretty slow on the first engraving test and actually did three different settings. One was a very slow scoring test, one was a engraving test and one combined the two. So I was scoring the outside layer and then engraving the inside to get better contrast. Taking the end mill out of the machine, you can actually see it's it's a pretty good result. It looks similar to what the OEM engraved on that end mill. Under the microscope, you can see the scored has a really deep line. And this is also something you can feel with your fingernail. Um, I could probably get away with you using less power there. Um, the only engraved part looks actually pretty similar to what the OEM manufacturer put there. I would say even a little bit more crisp and better quality, even though I used a low line setting there. So that was really nice. I then wanted to see what is the minimum font I can get away with. And a lot of my end mills, because I'm working in micro milling, have small shanks. This is a six millimeter shank. And uh, I did once again, three different settings and craving a very, very tiny font on this end mill, which obviously goes a lot quicker as you can see. And you can read the font even though it's only one, one and a half millimeters tall. This is really cool. Taking a look under the microscope, um, this is definitely very visible. Um, I especially like the combination between scoring and engraving, but I have to say one advantage of just engraving the material is there is nothing you can feel with your fingernail or any indicator. So the run out of your tool would be unchanged. Zooming out, you can see how tiny that font is. And for me, this is, this is fantastic result. Um, this actually looks better than the majority of the end mills I use and see what the OEMs engrave on there. As this was the first time using the machine, I wanted to try a couple other materials. So here is a piece of plaque anodized aluminum. Um, setup once again is pretty quick, adjusting the focus, closing down the laser and hitting the start button. And you can immediately see with a blue laser diode, um, I'm using a much quicker setting because we have more power for use here. Pretty engraving. It's totally usable to get a part number or a design on it. Next up, I wanted to try some stainless steel. This is 1.4305, so a very common crate of stainless steel in Germany. Um, using the IRR diode here, I was just scoring the text and let us take a closer look under the microscope. The text looks really good. Um, I mean, obviously with higher speed, you get less contrast. Um, but overall for stainless, this is a fantastic result. I would say even a tiny little bit better than in aluminum. Higher speeds reduce the contrast and you can see to the right side, you have more laser power. Um, I personally like the results in that row where you have a medium amount of power. Overall, I'm really impressed by this little machine. Thanks a lot to Xtool for sending me this machine free of charge as a review unit. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In my next video, I'm going to take a little bit of a closer look at how it is engraving, analyzing the engraved parts and tuning the result to get even more contrast.